Hi guys, this is Mark Filler. Welcome to Back Analyst. In this video, I'll be talking about API services built with JavaScript deployed into Back Endless. However, before I go there, I'd like to announce that Back Endless 4 is available in the cloud and you're welcome to uh, create an app, uh, start building with it, let us know, please let us know what you think. It truly is a remarkable release. We have put a lot of thought and time into it and uh, it's a foundation for a lot of other things that we've been working on and you will be hearing about many of them soon. So going back to the topic of this video, API services. Uh, there are two ways to build API services with Backendless. Starting with Backendless 4, you can uh, write your service code right in the console and deploy it from there, and it will automatically become uh, a service. So essentially, any JavaScript code will be automatically converted to an API service with its own endpoints, analytics, security, and so on. Uh, or alternatively, you can write your code in your development environment and then just deploy it into back analyst. So I will demonstrate both of these approaches uh, today in this video. Whenever you build an API service, it could really be an extension of your backend, doing something useful, working with your data, handling your business logic. Um, it could be a service that you build for IoT integration because for every single service, every method becomes an endpoint that can be tapped into from, uh, from any kind of device. Uh, or uh, uh, an API service could be a general purpose and very soon you'll be able to publish uh, those API services into our marketplace and share it with other developers and uh, possibly generate some revenue from it. So let me go uh, to Back Endless Console and uh, I'll demonstrate both of the approaches to you. So right here I have a, an application that I created. Uh, it's a brand new app. There is absolutely no data in it. And we'll start by creating an API service in console. So by switching to business logic, uh, there is a new section that is called coding. And right here, under coding, I'm going to switch to JavaScript. And uh, under services, create a new file. Let's call it myservice.js. And uh, in here, we'll just create a class. And let's call it myService. And we'll keep it very, very simple for now, just to demonstrate the concept uh, and introduce the hello world method that will return hello. So this is really just a, a class for now. To turn it into a service, there is an API call that is uh, backendless.servercode.addService. And you pass in the class name in there. So this is all that is required to create a service. You click Save, and by switching to API services, you see that there is a My service right there in JS, and uh, uh, there is a, an endpoint right there that you can see in this field. By clicking Invoke, it invokes the service and uh, displays the results. You can see the headers right here on the headers panel, and there is a CURL that you can get on the code panel. But uh, the service is, as I said, super, super simple. In fact, uh, you could do a lot more to it. And let's just start uh, uh, doing some, some interesting things here. So first of all, the method by default is going to be post. If you want to make it get, you would need uh, to change the method name to start with get. Or you can use the JS doc style comments. And uh, here we could add uh, an annotation route get Hello. Okay, so here we're just customizing how an endpoint is built for that service. Let's click Save. It is going to be redeployed. And uh, now we can go back to service and notice that now it is get slash hello. Let's invoke it again. Got the result. And in fact, since this is a get method, what you can do is you can copy the entire path and uh, paste it in a browser. And that does the invocation. So really just a super, super simple way to tap into the service and uh, invoke the, its functionality. Now, what if you want to add a method uh, to that service? In fact, that's what we're going to do. Let's add a method called name and we'll uh, change the result to say hello and then name. In order for that parameter to be recognized by console, we can add uh, another annotation, param, and we'll say the type is string and the name of it is name. 
let's click Save. And once it is saved, if we go to API Services, notice that the console recognizes that there is a name argument. Uh, I'm going to type in Mark, click Invoke, and it says Hello Mark. In fact, if I go back to that URL that I have invoked and uh, pass in the name argument with the parameter Mark, then we can invoke exactly the same uh, method right from the browser. You can add additional parameters for get methods and then the console provides a way to add those key value pairs. Additionally, you can set additional headers so and those headers become uh, accessible programmatically right from your service. If you want to impersonate a user from your application, use this login button and you can uh, specify a user from your application. And the possibilities really are infinite here because it's not just the strings. You can actually define complex types. Uh, you can define arrays. Uh, whatever you really need can be described using these annotations and uh, your service uh, can just uh, process that data as well. Now, if you're using node uh, modules, it is also uh, 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 possible to integrate node and start using node uh, within the, the implementation of, uh, of your service. It, although that would be probably simpler to do uh, starting with a local invocation, which is exactly what I'm going to do next. Notice that there is a button that says download project template and uh, if you click on it, it just gives you this navigation. I'm going to go into JavaScript. You can either click and uh, click next or just double click and it switches to the node uh, to the JavaScript uh, section. Here there is a API service item that I'm going to download. Backendless generates uh, a zip file with all the project information. I'm going to unzip it and then I will take this directory and just drag it to my IntelliJ IDEA and uh, once I am in the project I will go to the terminal which is built into IDEA and I will uh, type in npm install. This downloads CodeRunner and the backendless SDK for JavaScript, essentially all the dependencies. And I should also note that the project that you have downloaded as a template is automatically pre-configured to work with your backend. And it also includes a sample service uh, as a part of this project. And what that sample service does is whenever you invoke it, it will actually save an object in the backendless uh, data table, in the backendless database. To see how it works, Type in npm run debug. That starts the service locally on my computer but registers it in backendless. In fact, if I go here, we see that the sample service is right there and uh, the version number it has this underscore underscore debug and uh, this label indicates that this is, this is a service in debug. So I'm going to type in a name Fred, click invoke and uh, Invocation takes place, which you can see right here that a service has been invoked and uh, an object is also saved in backendless database. So click on data and you will see in the sample model table that there is an object with the name Fred. Okay, and uh, the, the, the source code for the service is right there under sample service and the sample model is the object that is being saved. I'm going to stop the debug session and then type in npm run deploy, which will deploy that sample service into the, uh, into the cloud so it runs on the back end of the service. So now it has been published and if I go back to console and refresh, oops, I'm going to refresh it on business logic, you can see that the sample service is now one of the deployed services. Uh, I'm going to type in a different name, click invoke, the object has been saved and in the database we now have uh, two objects. So there is Fred and there is Joe. So the service is now running in the cloud. And uh, as you can see it is super super simple to actually build services either by downloading them and running them locally and developing them locally which would probably be for more complex services or doing it right there in the console. Uh, our goal is to simplify the process of development and I think this really made it as, as trivial as it can be. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of services you guys are going to build. Once we open up an ability to publish those services into the marketplace, I think that's going to be 
really a fantastic opportunity for everyone because it's going to be super, super simple to share your executable code uh, for many other developers who build apps with backend list. If you have any questions about anything that you saw today, please uh, contact us. You can write to uh, our support forum, which is support.backendless.com. And we're also on Slack now. So if you go to slack.backendless.com, you can register and receive an invite and join our team uh, for, uh, for a conversation on Slack. So uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. And as always, happy coding.